All right, so uh, as of close of business on Thursday, about 70% of the United States has received at least one dose of one COVID-19 vaccination. About 60% of us have been fully vaccinated. What does that mean? 30% of this country is not vaccinated in any way, shape, or form. And 40% is not fully vaccinated. Again, the government, in this case the CDC, will not tell you exactly how many people have natural immunity because the government refuses to test for it. They'll mandate vaccines. They won't mandate testings to see if you have antibodies. Whole different topic, but still fact. Get this. According to Forbes magazine, nearly one third of healthcare workers in the United States hospitals are still not vaccinated. One third of healthcare workers. Bloomberg reports this. As many as 40% of U.S. airport security screeners haven't been vaccinated for COVID-19. And now this from the legal point of view. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that uh, basically takes care of places like Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Louisiana, a couple of weeks ago said that the mandate that uh, Joe Biden is trying to put in place for for private businesses, any private business with 100 or more employees, has to have all of those employees vaccinated or test on a weekly basis negative, or they will be fined. Anyway, the Fifth Circuit ruled that as uh-uh, not going to stand. Last week, the Occupation Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, in a statement on its website said that that agency, quote, has suspended activities related to the implementation and enforcement of the private business requirements. Still, the Biden administration is pushing forward. All of this now lands in the lap of, guess where? Cincinnati, Ohio, in the Sixth Circuit. In fact, the Sixth Circuit has given the Biden administration until November the 30th, which would be a week from this coming Monday, uh, to file a response to what happened in the Fifth Circuit. And it won't be a three-judge panel that will hear this case now as it gets to Cincinnati. It will be the full court on the Sixth Circuit, which has a Republican-appointed majority. So it would seem on the surface that vaccine mandates and the Biden administration's push for such is beginning to come apart. Is it? Standing by now to weigh in on this is a man that knows all things about health care. Paul Siegert is a partner, a managing partner in PCS Advisors. They work with companies all over the planet to get their health care worker, get their employees, I should say, the best and most efficient health care possible. Paul Siegert, how are you on this glorious Saturday? I'm doing great. How are you today, Ken? I'm doing well, Paul. It would it seem like the Biden's mandate, the Biden administration's mandate on private businesses is beginning to fall apart. Does it appear to be that way to you? It does, and that's not a, an incredible shock. I mean, you do have... You can find plenty of sound bites of legal experts who said that it was very safe uh, and would hold up the scrutiny. But if you look at the track record that OSHA has with these emergency temporary standard authority, uh, the, the, when these instances, when they take advantage of that, they don't generally hold up that well. Six out of the nine, last nine times they've done it, they haven't held up to, to court challenges. Yeah, and, it's not and, a massive surprise. No, OSHA cut and ran from the thing this week. It seemed like a scheme anyway from the start because the minute that uh, Biden came out with the mandate, um, you had his chief of staff, Ron Kane, or Klain, I should say, um, saying that it was uh, a workaround by going through OSHA, which, right. you know, again, would lead one to believe that if you're saying that initially, that there would be legal challenges to that. I. I don't know what, I'm not going to predict what a court will do, certainly not a a Sixth Circuit appeals court uh, here in Cincinnati, but I would think that if it didn't pass muster in the Fifth Circuit, if it's going now in front of a full court with uh, the majority appointed by Republican presidents, it would have a very difficult time standing up here in the Fifth, and I think ultimately it winds up in the Supreme Court. What do you think? I agree, Uh, and I think it's a pretty high, just as, as the Fifth Circuit pointed out, 
it's a pretty high bar to establish that there's grave danger and that this is necessary. I think by their own estimates, they said that by doing this, they would save 6,500 lives. And it took months for them to write the rule a couple of years into a pandemic. Uh, and I think that doesn't really indicate that they were taking it, uh, approaching it as though it was grave danger. And when you see the administration coming out saying, hey, in this won't take effect until many months down the line, but in the meantime, go ahead and start to implement it now. Mm. And they were encouraging employers to do that, I think, because they had some, they had some expectation that it would run into challenges. Yeah, I think so, too, and I thought it was kind of um, disingenuous on their part, but be that as it may, we'll see how the court uh, uh, defines and delineates all of that. Okay, uh, straight from his, uh, his oversee of the tremendous, uh, successful withdrawal from Afghanistan, the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, is directing all military branches to ensure service members receive the vaccine COVID case numbers are surging, apparently, or have over the summer, and the Army has started to weed out unvaccinated soldiers by blocking their reenlistment, including reserve and guardsmen. So uh, a country that um, is dependent on a volunteer Army, as we are here in the United States, until and if we get into some sort, and God forbid we ever do, some sort of armed conflict with another superpower, uh, the Army now has begun to politicize itself even more so with this. So now we have a problem here, I think, in this country that's developing. Uh, Forbes says one-third of healthcare workers in the U.S. still not vaccinated. Bloomberg says 40% of U.S. airport security screeners not vaccinated. And now here comes the Secretary of Defense, who has ordered the Army to weed out unvaccinated soldiers and, among other things, put their pensions in, in jeopardy and things like that. We're going after, it seems like, from a political standpoint, the very thing that this country really relies upon, which is its national security and the general health of its population. What kind of sense does that make? Well, it certainly doesn't make a lot of common sense, especially when you think about the fact that almost certainly the health care workers that you pointed out, the military, I mean, in both cases, it doesn't make a lot of common sense. These military folks have to maintain a a pretty high level of fitness and health. It's not a, exactly a high risk population. And the same thing when you consider the healthcare workers, not that the healthcare workers are necessarily the healthiest population. They're not, but you could certainly say that they, uh, it would make sense to check them for natural immunity and antibodies. And in many states, while you are required to get certain vaccinations to work in a healthcare facility, they will accept antibodies as uh, kind of in lieu of getting that vaccine, whatever yeah. that vaccine might be. So it's not terribly sensible. And as a result, now we're exacerbating a, a pre-existing shortage of healthcare workers, skilled healthcare workers. Now we're seeing that half a million nurses are leaving the profession uh, in the coming months, 500,000 as a result wow. of burnout, uh, as a result of feeling like they don't. And it's a high burnout career anyway. Uh, most nurses within two years that come out of school, we churn out 180, 190,000 nurses in a year. And by year two, half of them have quit yeah. under yeah. normal circumstances. Yeah. And yeah. now we're yeah. at 1.1 million shortage of nurses. Uh, and this is certainly not helping. You know, Paul, I, you and I have talked a lot about this, but I, and I gave the numbers as of Thursday night. 70% of the population has received one dose. 60% of the population has been fully vaccinated. One dose, if you believe the, the rhetoric that comes out of the CDC and NIH, which I don't, I think most of it is politicized. Uh, to my knowledge, Tony Fauci's next COVID patient that he treats will be his first. So I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to the rhetoric, but I do understand that there's a problem here and that these numbers of 70% and 60% uh, they've been fairly, they've been fairly firm. Uh, fully yeah. vaccinated has, you know, maybe come up in the last several months, four or five percent of the population. One vaccination has come up maybe four to seven percent over the last three or four months. But we're hitting a wall here again. And we've tried to bribe people with, uh, government lotteries like we had here in Ohio from, uh, Governor DeWine 
you know, get vaccinated, your name goes in a hat, you, you win a million dollars. We've tried scaring people to try and get the vaccine. You don't get the vaccine, you're going to die. You don't get the vaccine, you can infect grandma, she's going to die. And then, of course, we were told, even if you have the vaccine, there's breakthrough cases and the uninfected can infect you. I don't know right. where the next step is because th- this mandate is going to fall apart. I don't know where or how you reach that 30 percent that only wanted or only got one dose and gave up or the 60 percent that are fully vaccinated and 40 percent are left in the dust. I don't know where the next step is. Do you? Well, I, I think it's clear that those folks are holding out and they don't have, I mean, barring sending the you know, law enforcement to their home and forcing them to get vaccinated. I don't I don't think we're going to see these numbers um, move a whole lot more from here. And we've lost a lot of trust with the population in the process. An average person, I think, does know now that if you get vaccinated, you can still get COVID. You can have a breakthrough infection. I mean, the Ottawa senators are 100 percent back vaccinated. And just this past week, 40 percent of them, I believe, tested positive for COVID. And it's so they've not, but it's not, we haven't won the confidence of our population by telling them if they got this, we would whip COVID. And when I think lots of real experts have known this is an endemic, not a pandemic, yeah. and it's going to be here. So we have right. to learn to live with it. Right. No, it is. And what you want to do is mitigate the the uh, effect of it. You, you don't want hospitalizations. You don't want deaths. You're never going to eradicate it. 100% of anything never happens. So what you what you should be shooting for is that if you get it, it's like getting the flu. Um, it'll be like a flu shot every year. But the the problem the problem really is is there's no end game here. They've tried all right. these they've tried all these tricks and all these plays. But like anybody that runs any company or plays on any sports team, there's always an end game. There's no end game here, and that's why I say I don't know where they go next to convince the 40% of the population that hasn't been fully vaccinated because none of this other stuff has worked. I would think their last best hope were mandates and and and, uh, and, and slamming businesses that already can't fill positions because there's 10.4 million unfilled jobs in this country. So all of this has failed. I don't know what they do next. You know, sure, they can't, I mean, I wouldn't put it past coming to your door and demanding you get vaccinated. We actually had that suggested two or three months ago. We were going to see Fauci and Walensky and Amy Acton here in Ohio standing here in your front door with a white coat and a needle in your hand. I don't think they can do that, but I don't know what the next the next step is. I think with the fatigue, um, the general fatigue of the population, with all the, all the lockdowns that everyone has had to live through and, and I mean, so many ill effects from that, mental health and otherwise. I think the, the end game is really there at some point. It will have to be acknowledged that it's an endemic. It will be here. And there are high risk and low risk parts of the population. And we might hopefully get to a point where we follow the advice of the, the large number of scientists from some of the very best and most respected yeah. institutions in the world that put that great guarantee declaration together and said, let's protect the most vulnerable and allow the rest of the population to live normally and achieve herd immunity through the combination of natural infection and uh, vac- vaccination. Yes. Or, or, or as some percentage that are at great risk. Or, Paul, as some have suggested, you know, I mean, there's some that just get the spotlight because they're the darling of whatever particular cable channel gravitates to the narrative. But how about putting the same effort in? How about putting the same amount of dollars in, in finding out that if you've had this, what exactly is your natural immunity? Because there are a lot of people, I think, that would rather have something extracted from their body, like a blood sample, than sure. injected into their body. It's evident sure. there's yeah. 40, there's 30 to 40 percent of the population that feels that way. Why can't, why can't we have that same sort of muster? Why can't we have that same sort of commitment that we had to producing these vaccines to the tune of over $40 billion now for a company like Pfizer? Why can't we have that same sort of commitment? Well, I think you, the word, the operative word is billion. We've made billionaires. We will continue to do so. We're just bought 10 million, uh, 10 million rounds of the pill that COVID 
I mean, that Pfizer rather just uh, created before it's approved. I expect it will get approved. It'll be a good treatment and all of that. But we've spent another $5 billion, uh, at the government level doing that. Yeah. Which makes, in my mind, makes me scratch my head a little bit. <laughs> if that were to get approved, why don't we then just allow the normal healthcare system to distribute this thing and so on? But you're, you're not going to make billionaires by doing antibody tests. No, you're not. And so there's, you're not going to have the lobbying power that, that's no. behind that no. kind of common sense. Yeah. At the end of the day, all of the answers to our questions in life remains money. Yeah. Paul Seeger, great to hear your voice. You have uh, you stay well now because we need to hear that voice, and uh, we will catch up down the road. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. There he is, Paul Seeger, a man that tries to apply common sense, and oftentimes when people try to do that, uh, there's a large faction of uh, the crowd that says, we don't need common sense. We need this. We're coming to get you with this. Vaccines work. Vaccine mandates don't.